928, we had a board call for a teenage girl with a spinal injury. She hit the gas instead of the brake, which is a pretty common mistake for novice snowmobilers. She needs advanced medical care. Clearly it gone off a 40, 50 foot cliff. A lot of blood on her face, um, neck and back pain. Her helmet was shattered. Though it's snow, and plenty of it, that put Jackson Hole on the map, each year as the seasons change and the Earth moves around the sun, that famous snow finally melts. As it does, the valley's creeks and rivers explode with the runoff, charging out of the mountains as whitewater rapids. The result? World-class fly fishing, rafting, and kayaking that is just as legendary as the Tetons' jagged skyline. As the mountains drain, they lure in the whitewater obsessed. Locals like Teton County search and rescue volunteer, John Weedy. Weedy, as he's known by his teammates, believes that with all this whitewater comes great responsibility to look out for others on the river and keep the backcountry safe. My mother always emphasized volunteering, so that was one way that I could get into the giving back to my community. That's, you know, this is my home, so I feel sort of compelled to contribute. In Jackson, Weedy has forged a career path common among mountain town locals across the Rockies. He uses work as a means to fund the next adventure, and the next adventure is never far away. Over the years, he's gone through just about every job in Jackson. I don't often have very much money, but I have a lot of fun and I have a lot of great experiences. You know, I've come to the conclusion that I joined this team for a reason, and you know, I just make it more of a priority that when that phone rings, I drop what I'm doing, because generally what I'm doing isn't as important as helping somebody out because there's a reason they called. That's been like the biggest change for me, I'd say. Today, Weedy's whitewater experience will be center stage as the whole team meets on the banks of the raging Hoback River for an important but dangerous training exercise. Weedy's mission? to direct the team as it simulates the recovery of someone trapped in the river. It has to set a traverse line across the water, then maneuver a pontoon boat to a designated rescue site. Weedy makes it work because he enjoys taking from it what he can, what he's earned, what he, what he deserves. At the same time, he puts a ton back into it. First, Weedy sets the traverse line by ferrying his kayak across the current, a critical whitewater rescue skill. You need a certain amount of training and understanding of water to do it safely. There's a lot of gear involved. You know, depending on what level of water you're on in terms of difficulty, it's, it's scary and it's powerful and it's unrelenting. It's just not for everybody. On the opposite shore, Chris Lee and his team weigh in. 
working the ropes to overcome the force and violence of the river. If you don't have respect for the water, if you don't have respect for the snow, if you don't have respect for the mountains, you're in trouble. The pontoon boat is almost there. Time for the ropes team to steer it to shore. On three, one, two, three. My role on the team is just being a longer running member and maybe some more experience with you know, how, how everything works on the team, but that's sort of evolving from time to time. Success. Wheaties crew executes the simulated rescue and gathers for a debrief. That's why we have a lot of gear and a lot of people and a lot of training to um, utilize all our resources. He spent all weekend training us in swift water and he spent a lot of time preparing to train us ahead of time. I think we're very tight knit at this point. Even the new members on the team, you know, I think can probably feel that. We're always looking out for each other and that's, you know, it's really comforting in my mind. Like, I, I enjoy that. I can always call up on these people if I'm in need and they'll help me out. Year-round, the hangar operates as the hub for both practice and live missions. The team trains twice a month and might go for weeks without getting an emergency call out. But in March, when spring breakers flood the snowy landscape, Search and Rescue's phone starts ringing. Went over a cliff, difficulty breathing, unconscious. Well, we're all here, so um, did we get any details about this? Should we get the ship going? The call comes in from Granite Creek, a popular place to tour the backcountry on snowmobiles. A 14-year-old girl reportedly crashed, and given the power and speed of most sleds, the team expects her injuries to be severe. Uh, we have gotten a report that she's in the creek, so that adds a little bit of urgency. Due to the severity of the injuries, the team is trying to get the patient out of the backcountry in less than 90 minutes. Don't worry about it, we got this covered. Thanks, yep, bye. A 14 year old girl reportedly sails off a cliff on a snowmobile and is now seriously injured. So rescue coordinator Jess King dispatches her team into the backcountry. Uh, not that far up, only a quarter mile up the road. We just got a call. Um, we got a page from dispatch for an injured female snowmobiler near Granite Creek. Went over a cliff, difficulty breathing, unconscious. We don't know a whole lot about her other than that she has a possible spinal injury. Um, so that is a serious medical injury that uh, we want to make sure to get to quickly. Um, my medical here. opinion would be the helicopter would be better versus a pumpy if they're saying that it's um, a possible spinal. Where are we in, the 2500? Yes. She might have ridden her snowmobile into the creek, so she might be uh, not only cold, but wet and cold. Um, so we're concerned about hypothermia. Most injuries in the backcountry to the head, neck, or spine are potentially lethal on their own. Hypothermia speeds up the ticking clock by further weakening the patient's body. Flip is getting the 2500 together. I'll be your heli ops, how's that? Sounds good. That's why the team is trained to execute what's known as a rapid response swoop and scoop using the helicopter and snowmobiles. A swoop and scoop is probably best. Their goal? to reach, package, and retrieve the patient in under 90 minutes. This is our classic swoop and scoop. We have got a patient, um, she's injured, and we just take the helicopter, fly out there, grab her, and transport her back to a waiting ambulance. This is where Jess usually coordinates all the moving parts of a rescue, from incident command at the hangar. But that's a routine she's looking to shake up. So when there's a chance to join in, Jess jumps at the opportunity. But I'm off, so technically I can't go unless I transfer off to someone. You want me to do off? I would love for you to do off. She hit the gas instead of the brake, which is a pretty common mistake for novice snowmobilers. She needs advanced medical care fast. I need a dress. Cody is a heli specialist, but this time he's not flying. 
That frees up a seat for Jess in the chopper. Weedy. Yes. You okay, Snowmobile? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Weedy seizes the chance to make good on his personal commitment to answering more calls. He pitches right in with Flip and the snowmobile team. Uh, we have gotten a report that she's in the creek, um, Granite Creek, so that adds a little bit of urgency, certainly, to injury, um, hazard, to rescuers, hazards to herself. Jess and the heli crew prepare for liftoff. The plan, to zip over the mountains directly to the rescue scene, where they were rendezvous with Weedy and the snowmobile team. This is SR-62, do you copy? This is Cody. Hey, Cody, this is Weedy. Can you tell the follow-up snowmobile team to bring a warming kit and a BLS kit? I got it. Weedy and Flip make a solid team. Flip is the most experienced snowmobile specialist and many years of riding sleds to access ski terrain have turned Weedy into a strong rider. You have to be skilled these days because the newest sleds come packed with so much power. It's easy for a novice to get into trouble. And according to initial reports coming in from the crash scene, that's what happened here. You ride way more than I do, but get in the back seat on one of those sleds and then your sure. thumb just hits that throttle and take off. Okay? And that's what happens with an inexperienced rider when they get into trouble and lose control and grab. Jess and the chopper team are right behind Weedy and Flip, racing to the scene where the patient may have landed in the creek. With the snowmobile team on the road and the heli crew in the air, Teton County Search and Rescue is hitting this emergency with everything it has. What's going through my mind is that she's cold, she's in the water. We need to make sure that we get her out of the water. With a young snowmobiler injured and possibly hypothermic, volunteers from Jackson Hole are heading to the scene to execute a swoop and scoop rescue. There's a, a hurt woman on a snowmobile in Granite Creek. She uh, apparently had an accident where she um, ran off the trail and, uh, and, and rolled her snowmobile into the creek. That's the first indication of what we heard today. The heli crew swoops and the sled team scoops. Everyone is needed to help transport the patient off the snow and into the chopper. So there's definitely a strong relationship between injury and cold. Our environment is cold, but when you're injured, a lot of your body's energy goes into taking care of that injury. No matter what day of the year it is, no matter what time of day it is, we're always worried about our patients being cold. Uh, our plan will be that I'm the heli manager, so I'll be sitting up front. We've got Chris in the back, and we're going to start um, making a plan as to how to approach the patient, package the patient. We're going to talk about if we need to move her out of the river, how we're going to do that. We want to make sure to start getting our heat packs warming so that when we get there, they're already hot and ready to package on her. Chris has eyes on the crash scene, and it doesn't look good. Even from the air, they can see what happened. They clearly had gone off a uh, probably 40, 50 foot cliff. As the heli prepares to land as close to the patient as possible, Weedy and Flip roll up at the snowmobile trailhead and coordinate with the pilot. Yeah, we just saw you. Uh, what it look like up there? So, um, I don't know what exactly she did, but she definitely didn't go into the creek. She uh, went off of the cliff. So we get down to Granite Creek, 
make sure everybody's on board where we're going. Nicole has gotten down there as an initial responder. So is there pretty good access for your team there? Yeah, I'd be laying like uh, 20 yards away from her. All right, we'll talk to, uh, I think the reporting party is right here and the sheriff. Maybe get you up there in a minute. Are you a reporting party? Yes. <laughs> she was conscious. She was conscious. Is there somebody up there? Yeah, the right guy, now? Christian is his name. He's there with her now. And there's uh, like three snow machines pulled off to the side of the trail. So you'll know where to go in. OK, thank you. As Weedy gets critical info, Flip wastes no time readying the sleds, while Chris and the team's paramedic prepare for the worst. The hours of training now pay off as Flip and his team expertly form up the sleds to head into the backcountry. Yeah, we got a bit of adrenaline going just to see what's on scene and what's happened happened down there. You know, again, it's it's relatively close to the parking lot, so. Chances are it's not too bad, but you never know what you're going to find um, on scene. With no time to waste, the sleds rip down the trail as other snowmobilers pull to the side to let them pass. So uh, the helicopter crew, we got um, hands on with the patient. Just at that moment, I look up and I see the star team coming over the crest of the hill with their jackets on and their snowmobiles. It was awesome because we knew they could come and help us transport that patient under the rotor wash into the helicopter, which is, that's just great. It was, it's really wonderful to see them. Now on scene, the sled team learns a disturbing detail about this crash. Yeah, her helmet was broken. Uh, into a couple pieces. If the impact was strong enough to shatter the helmet, the team worries about injuries to the young rider's head. Backcountry Zero. A campaign to reduce fatalities in the backcountry. It's time to heighten our awareness about safety. It's time for Zero. A 14-year-old snowmobiler sustains terrible injuries after sailing off a cliff, shattering her full-faced helmet on impact. So for the team, it's a dash to get the patient out of the backcountry in under 90 minutes. She had a jaw fracture, possibly, but she, she took a hit. It takes 1,100 pounds of pressure to fracture the human skull. It's unclear how much force is delivered to the girl's helmet, but it's a lot. Those helmets are designed for a lot of impact, and she, uh, she broke it. It's been a little over an hour since the call out, so the team is cutting it close if it wants to execute a swoop and scoop rescue in under 90 minutes. So uh, the helicopter crew, we got um, hands on with the patient. We packaged her into the vacuum mattress, got some heat packs on her, um, doing the full medical assessment. She's actually already packaged in a litter. So we come in, we lend a hand to bring her over there. The ground assault on the scene by Weedy and the rest of the sled team really pays off. Now the patient is just a short flight away from the advanced medical care her injuries will require. Snowmobile teams are headed out and back to the hangar. We are flying back from the scene and we fly into the hangar and we can see that the ambulance is there, the SAR team is there to support us. It's really great to, to have all that support. The ambulance is there at the hangar because it can provide a higher level of care on the way to the hospital. 
she basically had been on the road and sort of got in the back seat on the snowmobile. And when you do that, your hand goes on the throttle and then you just kind of get pinned in that mode. And she had gone straight off the bank and she must have been moving pretty quick. Really professional, um, all hands on deck, uh, had all the resources we needed if, if anything were to go the direction we weren't thinking it was gonna. Kind of a clockwork rescue. A uh, ra rather simple rescue, you know, like it was easy to get there um, because of the weather was nice. We could fly straight over the mountains. But I think it was quick, it was good. Cool, all right, thanks everybody.